In this video, we're gonna look at the Pathfinder tool, the Shape Builder tool, and learning about expanding and expanding appearance. The Pathfinder tool is a very useful tool, especially in Illustrator. It also uh, is handy in InDesign and Photoshop as well, but there's just not as good or as many options as we see in Illustrator. So the Pathfinder panels right here. If you can't find it, go to Window and Pathfinder, and all our panels are under Window. So here it is, and it's set up, my little worksheet here is set up the exact same way as this Pathfinder is too. So I have our Pathfinder, so how it works with the Pathfinder, the only way it works, if I have two shapes that are side by side, it's not gonna work. The shapes actually need to be um, overlapped. So this is the only way it'll work. So if I have two shapes overlapped, now all of a sudden I can make a new shape, a new Pathfinder inside that shape. So let's get to it. So once I actually start making those paths, I have to use the white arrow tool to select the shapes that are inside, which happens more under Pathfinders. So also the way that they're organized too, you have shape mo modes and Pathfinders. Shape modes are when you're done with clicking on any one of these buttons with overlap shapes, you're gonna have a shape at the end of it. You're gonna have a, what they might even call a unique polygon of a single color at the end. It doesn't take into account different colors, and at the end you're gonna only have one color. Where if you use the Pathfinder options, what's gonna happen, you're gonna have a shape, mind you, but it's gonna be made up of different paths, just like you see down here, which we'll get into in just a little bit. So let's start with the shape mode. The first one we see is Unite. So mainly what I have here are a bunch of different circles that I put all together. Now I did group them, but I can ungroup them right now. If I click on one, they, actually I ungroup them. If I want to, I could group them, Command G, and now they're all grouped together. And what I can do is obviously just unite them. So I'm going to click on that, and what it does, it puts all those shapes together that were overlapped and unites them, combines them all into one shape. Next, what I have here is I have a circle, uh, a bunch of circles, obviously that cloud, now it's united, and I have a word in front of it. Doesn't matter the color of the word, word, because once again, it makes it into a single color, usually black. So then I have that, and now I have the united shape in behind, another, and I made, uh, outline the type, in front and now what happens when I actually minus the front so it actually is a part of the path now it's not like the word uh, cloud is now white it's actually a part of the path meaning you can see underneath it it's like knocked out altogether and over here I have now two clouds I have my black united cloud I have a blue united cloud and they're on top of each other so intersect it removes everything except the overlapped parts so it's going to keep this middle part and as I unite that, or intersect that, it just keeps that part. It gets rid of the parts that were not overlapped. If I look here at exclude, it does the opposite of that. It removes the overlapped part. So if I have these two clouds together, united shapes, overlapped, and I will just now exclude, and now the overlap part is gone, but these parts are together. And now if I look at the Pathfinders part now, okay, great. Uh, divide. So realistically, I use Unite quite a bit. Minus Front, I don't use a lot. Uh, Intercept and Exclude, I don't use a lot. Divide and Unite, I use quite a bit. They're very, very useful. Divides all shapes into separate parts. So here, once again, I have two clouds, uh, two shapes uh, overlapping each other, black and blue. And if I were to divide them, done. That's what happened. And you can't tell, but I have to use now my, if I just use my black tool, the black move tool, it selects everything because everything is grouped. Even though you divided it, everything is grouped. If I can ungroup them, object, ungroup, and now they are ungrouped and now I can use it that way. Or if I still kept it grouped, what I can do is use my white arrow tool to move those objects elsewhere. And that's exactly what I have there. No, actually, I should play around the path as well. Trim. Trim and Merge are very similar. Um, I, once again, I don't use them a lot, but for the most part, they are very useful. So here I have three clouds. Now, if you notice, the one black cloud in front, a blue one in behind, another blue one in behind, and these blue ones are actually touching here. And the same thing exactly going on here, but let's look at what Trim does. Cut Cuts away the top shape layer from the revealing bottom layer. So let's look at that. So I click on that. I'm going to click on Trim. Now with my white arrow tool, I'll be able to move this one move this one as separate and move that one as separate. So they're all separate shapes, just similar to similar to divide. Now what I can do here with merge, cuts away the top shape layer from the revealing bottom layer, but it joins the this, this same colors together. So now if I do the exact same thing, I'm going to merge. And with my white arrow, I can move this. And now when I move this, it's actually connected because they're the same color. So that works out quite well too. 
Once again, very similar to divide, which I prefer to use anyways. Uh, the crop. So here I have my shape in front. I have a bunch of red bars in behind. And if I crop them together, what happens? The thing that is in front almost kind of becomes the mask. If we're familiar with clipping masks, it will show It'll show something and hide something. And what it's obviously gonna show, it's only gonna show what would be inside of this. So if I put those all together and I crop, only what you see here inside of that initial shape will be shown. Unlike clipping mask, those other things that were outside are gone, they are deleted. A clipping mask actually holds on to them once you double click inside. If I double click inside of this, once again, I still only have access to these new shapes that were made. Outline. So with outline, very simple. If I click on it, outline, I get an outline shape. Now it does do something a little bit weird with this one and this interesting path here, but it is an outline shape and that's kind of all it comes down to is that. And if I did want to play around with the stroke, I can now play around with that stroke and it becomes that outline shape. Next I have my minus back, which is very similar to minus front because it does that. It subtracts it bottom shape from the top shape. So if I have these two clouds once again together and I click on that and that's what I get. I just get that bottom shape. And the shape, it just minuses the back out. And that's it with Pathfinder. So a lot of options there, which is great. And remember, when you pathfind, you click on that shape after it's done, it is a grouped shape. So you can either use your white arrow tool to move all those paths around, or you can just ungroup them and that'll work too. Shape Builder. Now Shape Builder is another great tool uh, and not, it's a newer tool to Illustrator, but it just kind of helps uh, create new paths, but in a slightly different way with this tool. So here it is right here on our uh, toolbar. And if you cannot see it, uh, potentially you might have uh, only certain tools showing. So always to be on the safe side, click on your window toolbars in advanced and you'll see all the tools that you should have. So select all the objects first. So I've got to select everything first. Now remember, these are all separate circles, different colors. I did all that. I select everything first. And then what I can do, it is going to connect the shapes. Now I can click and drag. Um, once I go hover over it, if I click on the shape builder tool, now what happens, see how it kind of highlights a certain area, it shows, oh, you're about to do something here, do something here. That's all I have to do is click and drag, and it does that. Just in case yours doesn't do that, I'm gonna double click on the shape builder tool, and look what I'm allowed to do here. I can, a uh, few different options, gap detection and all this, but the, the one main one I wanna look at is it will uh, choose uh, pick a color from the artwork. If you choose just from your color swatch, it's going to change whatever swatch you have selected. So everything would be blue. But I want to use the color swatches because I already have a lot of colors in here. I'm just going to say OK. So now I can just click and drag and start connecting shapes. Ah, uh, see what? I did go back to that one, didn't I? Double click, color swatches, artwork. So now with artwork, I'm just going to click and drag. And there I go, now it's that green. So whatever I color I start with, red to the brown it's going to change it to the red whatever so if i want this to be orange i've got to click orange to the purple if i want this to be this part to be red i got to click red to the orange and then i can just create some interesting shapes there so you're just clicking and dragging and kind of creating some new interesting shapes click on my white arrow tool and now i've created that separate shape that i can kind of do something with and once again as long as i select what I want to actually shape build with, I can go back to my shape builder tool and just start playing around and trying to find some interesting shapes in there. All right, that is the shape builder tool. Let me move this one back. And now expanding. Now this one's an interesting one because they're just good things to know in Illustrator and the reason why we use them. So the way this is gonna work is potentially I have this shape. And this shape is just one fill and one stroke, a pink stroke, black fill. And what I might wanna do here is actually separate the two uh, and by doing that I just click on expand object expand and now and it says do you what do you want to do do you want to expand the fill and the strokes and yes I do so now what it does is with my white arrow tool I could just once again move the black fill which is not just a fill anymore it's its own shape so I could actually add another stroke to it if I wanted to the size and now I have that and I can expand this one again later if I wanted to and now I just have this and this is not just a stroke anymore it's actual a path it's a shape so I could actually play around with this and now it's its own shape it just has to have a white area in the middle of it okay so that is how we expand objects okay and it only works uh, it'll only be highlighted in black when you only have a simple shape 
of one fill, one stroke. The second that that shape you have, whatever it is, has another option applied to it, you, it might be warped, it might have an effect, there's something else going on with it, it won't allow you to expand, but you have to expand the appearance first, then you can expand the simpler shape after. So I'm gonna expand appearance, because I have a little drop shadow on here that I applied, and I'm just going to do that, expand appearance, and that's it. Once again, with my white arrow, I'm just going to click and drag, and look what comes off. The, the drop shadow comes off on its own. It's, it's its own thing. And now, once again, I have my black part and my now my pink, uh, which is no longer a stroke. Actually, no, this is still a stroke, which is great. Uh, I could expand that to become a path. And now it's a, it's a path. It's a shape. I can do the same thing there, too. And once again, this is a path. And I can add a stroke to it if I want, just like above. And now I have a stroke on it too, which it can, once again, object, expand, I can expand that. Okay, got my white arrow tool, click out the fill, and now I have a separate object there as well. And that's all we wanna see about expanding, expand appearance, learn about the shape builder, and all the great things that you can do with the Pathfinder.